What's going on everybody? Happy Friday. We are here. The weekend is about to begin. Again, if you're in the Louisville area and you're coming to the card show, stop by, say hello at the table. Uh, Chad and John will be set up next to me, so you're more welcome to go through their stuff and chat chat with them too. Alright guys, we did a Twitter feeds. I'm going to start doing this kind of with the forums every so often. And we're going to look at two different discussions today. And feel free to leave some comments on this stuff in the video because I'm interested to see what everybody else is seeing out there too. This has been very, very popular. Both posts are going to go together in a way. And we'll see what we come up with here because, I mean, everybody's going to see different aspects of this from their one, their point of view and where they live at because what people in California are seeing and Dallas are seeing and we'll say Atlanta, Nashville... Um, Chantilly, all these different shows. Everybody's going to see different pieces because the region they're in. And plus, what else is going on during that card show? Is there other events? You know, is there multiple big card shows going on? All different aspects. But let's hit this first one here. They say, is card ladder dragging down the market? I know some people have made some videos on stuff like this. And I'm sure they'll chime in in the comments section. Guys, I also encourage you. Please look at each other's comments. Feel free to engage each other. Just keep it clean and stuff like that there. So, I know, like he says here, there's a lot of stuff about card letter all over the place. Some are uh, adamant they are part of what caused the massive pump in dump type stuff. Nobody's really going to go into that a whole argument onto it. And I got it because it's just been beat dead. But this is something I thought was interesting. That card ladder seems to be having the same effect going on in the other direction right now, which is down. The problem are people are obsessed with comps. And he talks about the non-rare items here, too. Because, really, when you start hitting the rare items that are out there, you really have to go with how bad the person want it and how much are they going to spend. Alright, so as he says, as... The market falls. It makes it nearly impossible to rise because people don't want to pay over the last comp. What are we using for comps? Card ladder, eBay, and half of the stuff on there. I mean, I don't have access to card ladder, nor do I have access to market movers and all that. But I can tell you, there's a lot of different people putting out this uh, comp stuff, trying to get it from everywhere, and a lot of this stuff wasn't paid for. That's why I always stress, if you found it sold on eBay, go onto your seller dashboard, go on Terrapeak, see if that item was actually paid for or not. Okay, off my tangent, off my tangent now. So, as he's saying, basically, nobody wants to pay over the last comp. How do they find it? And then someone is willing to sell it a bit lower, then a bit lower, then a bit lower, which just piles up to tons of lower comps in the database that makes the market nearly impossible to move in the opposite direction. I agree. But at the same time frame, when you're having the, in the 10,000 PSA 10 club and the stuff's overly produced, stuff is going to still continue to go down because there's not a need out there for it. There's not a want. So, if I could go, and this is something I've said all the time, if I can go see the same card at 15 to 20 different dealers have it out of 50 at a show, it doesn't make it desirable to me because if I can't get it for the price of this table, I'm going to keep going. Eventually, somebody's going to give it to me at the price I want because they're going to want to make a sale. And as a dealer, I always urge people, go look at other people's tables early to see what they have because... If you're the only person out there selling it you at that show, you kind of control where your price is going to be, and you don't have to budge on it. Now, I do got it. We'll go into another topic here shortly on to that stuff. But with they're talking about pop counts over 50 or 100 max. I still think at 100, you're still considered a low pop count to me with how much stuff's produced. Now, if it's zero number, different story, but... If we're going to like a 1985 Tops, Roger Clemens PSA 10, well, that's probably not good. I think that's still like around 26. But like Dan Marino, maybe, John Elway rookies, they're probably just around 100, maybe over 100 now. I still think that's a very low pop rate for what was produced. And how many times are you going to see that card pop up? Maybe two or three on eBay at some outrageous price you see it at show. 
that's going to be kind of a rare find unless you're in a big show like the National, for an example. But I do agree, you do have what he calls the escape, or trying to escape the death spiral, lower and lower comps. I think it's going to happen. I mean, years ago, you wanted to sell new release stuff as soon as it came out to get the highest amount you could on it because it's just going to spiral down from there. But a lot of people are trying to move stuff. They're still in the flipping mode. Hey, I bought this for 70 It's go. It's now selling for 90 I want 80 on it. And yeah, eventually those prices are going to keep dropping and dropping down because there has to be a need. There has to be a want out there basically for that item. And if I see stuff that's, you know, right around comps, you know, it may fall below. It may go a couple dollars more. Depends. Is it a fixed price? Is it an eBay auction? All kind of things come into play. But I do agree that with all these things dropping and dropping and dropping, the databases are going to show that they're worth less and less and less. And in some cases, I'd probably say in probably 70% of the cases, they rightfully should be. I mean, if you go across and look at how many Michael Jordan autograph, autographs, wow, Michael Jordan Fleer rookies that have been graded, it's a huge amount, huge amount. But when you start breaking it down by eights, nines, tens, and all that, that's where you start start looking at how rare is it to find a Michael Jordan Fleer rookie to show, and then at this current grade, you know, do you see him frequently? I mean, I usually see a Jordan rookie per show. Grades vary. But how often do I see a 9 there or a 10, you know? Just what it is. But I do like this. And my thing is, do you guys think that the... I don't want to use Marketplace. The sites that we use, whether there's probably about 10 of them out there do it, that show comps. Do you think that's really driving the market down? I don't think so. I think that what's driving it down is people are being very, very limited on what they want to buy. You still got your flippers out there that don't buy anything across the board, but they're probably going to pay you 50%, 60% because then they got to move it to make their scratch on the end of it. I still think that there's other aspects out there we're still falling because of the initial whole hype, pump and dump, and all that other stuff that went on. I don't think we fully settled in yet. And I don't think we fully settled in just for the stuff that's out there, but for the price of what these new releases cost. Give you an example. Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary Holly Boxes, I think they came out at like 200 a box. Now you're getting them at, well, they were on special at 120 I think they're like 130 140 a box. Stuff's going to drop eventually. Now stuff like Flawless and NT, that's a different story. Because that stuff there is just lim well was limited, but it's a big product to begin with. But just stuff like that there, taking consideration, eventually stuff is going to have to settle down. It, it's not going to be all of a sudden. It's going to take a while. Another year, maybe year and a half total. But it'll come down to it. All right. I know we talked a little bit on to this here. Uh, <laughs> this is the kind of stuff I laugh at. This is what I call a toilet bowl reads. The guy created the other threads of more and has no idea how data work. Has just been tossing slander. Missed no idea why they've been given the trolling so much attention, but I guess it works. <laughs> Great new thread, 2022 guy. You know, it's what somebody sees out there, and I don't harp on anybody that, you know, makes a comment out there because it's what they see. It's based off of their knowledge. They may not have all the facts. It's just what they see. And a lot of times, you can get back, hit up real hard like this before. And I like this. This guy here said, use your own brain to decide what cars to buy. It's the best device. It really is. And he's correct. No single person is bringing the sports card market down. If you haven't noticed, we're in a recession. Every monetary market's down. It's due to overspending by the government. Well, I would probably leave this piece out, but he's correct. There's a lot of variables involved to why stuff goes down. But also, we were at a high at one time frame that was just unforeseen. Nobody would ever have guessed. And the people 
had the stuff in it earlier, like, why is it selling for this? I'm going to get rid of a couple. Then you wait a couple more weeks, and the next thing you know, it's double the price. Let me get rid of some more, you know? All right. This here was quite the other part to it that I wanted to hit. I went to the Dallas card show this morning. Honestly, my first card show experience. Disappointed. Everybody was, uh, almost every dealer was asking two to four times eBay sold price. Jordan Wizard Auto sold for thirty-five, thirty-eight hundred on eBay. They asked twelve thousand. It's kind of funny because when you read through this thread, it talks about a lot of dealers really didn't care much to lower their prices at Dallas because they wanted those cards because they're setting up at the National. They wanted those cards on the grand stage of them all because their belief is they'll get more there for it. I don't see it. One, for Jordan stuff, maybe if it was in Chicago, you'll get more of a premium, but I don't think that amount of difference. And, you know, just that's just my thoughts on to it. You know, I like this because he said, since everybody's referring to eBay sold price, how do you make a deal at a card show? Well, some deals just aren't be made out there. I walk by people's tables, I'll see them overpriced. I try not to make a big scene or judgment. I'll usually come back when nobody's at the table and be like, hey, you got any room on this card at all? And they're like, oh, make me an offer. And I'm like, well, I don't want to insult you, but I mean, last sold was this, raw. I don't mind paying around this price for it because my thought is it's going to probably go to grading. I might make some money off it that way. But, you know, I'm not going to pay crazy amounts. If it's a rare card... Totally different concept here. I mean, some of that stuff is kind of rare. I don't even see it. But you guys get the point of it all. And he also talks about several dealers uh, not buying, even at prices lower than eBay. I think it depends on the card. To be honest, it shows I was never a person. I wasn't always buying, 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 buying. Everything that came to me, it shows. I didn't like that part of it all. I always bought because I knew either one, it was for myself. Two, I was going to grade it. Or three, I knew somebody that was a collector or would want that card, and I could use it in a trade to get something I wanted back in return. No, there's a lot of different other reasons out there, but those are usually my three general things that I look for when I'm buying. And it's just funny when you read through some of this stuff. They are right. Eventually, people are going to need cash at some point. You know, I think somebody said on there, you just can't pay your uh, employees on, with cards. There was a couple good comments I want to hit on to this. This guy is a similar one. Is this the uh, LeBron rookie guy? No. Okay. But he also talks that, you know, some guys are willing to trade, but you got to give more in trade. Well, my thing is, and the way I've always seen it for years pre-COVID, is that if I have a $10,000 card and you're offering me five $2,000 cards for it, I got to move all five of those to get what I want out of this here. I'm going to need a little bit more room onto it, so I'm going to need more to trade onto it. And that's always been around, unless you're, you know, trading one or two cards into one, you know, one for one or two for one. Normally, everybody always wants more on the table for it because they got more risk with more cards, which is understandable to me. And he, they're saying dealers may be picky with what you bring to their table, and they're always going to want a percentage off so they can make money. It's all the same stuff. I mean, they're repeating the stuff that's always been around and making it known again because maybe people forget. I don't know. This is the one here that was really caught my my eye. So they went to the Dallas show, spent like $700. Guy went up to a table. I guess he had a ton of like graded cards out in boxes. Uh, there it is. Table with thousands of dollars of slabs thrown in shoe boxes. So basically, he had two LeBron rookies that were going for like 150 a piece on eBay. Was interested in, in them uh, going for 300 six months ago. He asked the dealer. He said, "Make an offer." So he said 140. He jerked him out of his hand and acted all offended. Kind of interesting. I mean, if you don't. That's why I always say put stickers on your stuff so people know what you want for it. <laughs> because then there's not going to be a rough area on If I see you have something marked at $300 each, I see them going for $150 on eBay. 
unless usually the conversation starts out, I haven't priced these recently, so feel free to make an offer. Then I'll say, otherwise, I'm walking. I, I just don't even want to deal with it. And I know a lot of people are like that, too. Uh, and they said that there was a few different tables where they had nothing priced. They pulled up comps and basically got laughed at. So the you know the question comes down to place: Are we going off of comps? Or are we not going off of comps? I think it depends on the card. If you have something that's very rare, you use the comp as a base judge of what the card is selling for. But if you're talking about like a freaking Akuna Tops Update rookie card, yeah, they're probably going to be abundant onto it. But like I said, a lot of this stuff, I just sit there and think about it. I'm like, man, it's just like repeat, repeat all the time onto my thoughts onto this stuff. But again, I just want to see what a lot of people's other thoughts are. And if you guys ran across this, it shows, you know, are you getting the same type of response from dealers or buyers, sellers, whatever your aspect is onto it. Because it's always good just to see what other people are seeing across the board in different states, different shows, you know. I know there's a couple guys at my shows that are always willing to work on prices on this stuff because you've done a lot of deals with them or they just want to move it, whether it's raw, graded, whatever it may be. And this guy here that said he owned a shop for almost 10 years, and I think this is a great thing here. When I price cards to sell, I look at three different things. What I paid for it, what the last comp was, the most important, what's the lowest available on the market. Nobody looks at that anymore. There's very few people I even know that will look, okay, this is why I paid for it. This was the last comp. And then they go see what they're selling for. Hey, man, there's one up here even lower than the last comp. Nobody I know does that. Very few people out there. And it's a great thing to do because that last comp might be a month ago, you know, two, three months ago offhand. And depending on... You know, is the car serial number, the pop con, all that stuff. It, it all comes into play on to it. It really does. And he even talks about to where he basically tells, uh, you know, he'll give some deals on cards just to keep his customers happy. You have to do that, especially as a shop owner. But I just thought this was some interesting stuff when you guys look at it and stuff like that there. Because, you know... We're still looking at why is the market going down. Some people think the market has gone down or it's just about there. I still think we still have a way to go on a lot of stuff. At the same time frame, people are still talking about dealers, but and well, dealers, sellers, buyers, and shows. And now we're even talking about trading on why some people aren't trading, you know, to the to the comp it is. Why they want more because you're trading 5 to 10 cards for one card. Stuff like that there. In the end, it's your deal. Whether you're the buyer, the seller. It's up to you where you situate yourself at. And what you believe you're willing to settle for for a card. If I have a card posted at 500 and I can't find any that are sold on there. Would I take 300? Maybe. Would I look at 4 or 450? Probably. You know, it all depends. It depends on that person. So, again, guys, I appreciate you watching the videos and everything. I just wanted to go over some of this stuff because there's some interesting points that are made on there, especially, like I said, that last one. What can I currently buy this for? So, just keep that as food for thought. Um, again, if you guys are in the Louisville area tomorrow, please stop by the show. Uh, say hello. Other than that, guys, I am out. I will catch you next video.